How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a sweet ass week. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about turbo, whether or not you should use it, whether you should do a turbo wash. And today I want to talk to you about the gateway. Well, it's not a drug, but it is a recipe. And that is bird watches. Welcome to Stiller everyone. This is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if that's what you're into guys, I really hope you found the right channel for you. Have a look around, check it out. And if it is, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to ring the bell so you get all those sweet notifications. All right guys, like I said at the beginning, I've been getting more and more questions about turbo yeast and turbo washers and whether or not I think you should use them. Now here's the thing guys, I've never actually used turbo. <laughs> I did a whole lot of reading before I got stuck into this and I found a lot of people saying it just wasn't worth it. So I readily admit that I can't say from my own personal experience that you shouldn't use it. I kind of do agree with the uh, principle behind that sentiment that there's probably something better out there for you. It also became super, super obvious to me that there is one recipe that becomes the gateway to all other recipes that are not turbo. <laughs> Obviously, it depends on your own style, your own flair, and what you end up doing first, but more often than not, that looks like it is gonna be bird watches. By my reckoning, there is one main reason for that, and it is because it is super simple and approachable, probably more so than anything else I've done on this channel so far. And I guess number two, obviously, is apparently it tastes pretty good. It looks like you guys have been enjoying the slow-mo B-roll stuff, uh, so you know what? Roll it. Oh, you know what? Actually, before we do that, let's just talk really quickly about what the Sam Hill of Birdwatchers is. <laughs> So, to get this off the table, first of all, you should really go and check out the original post by Birdwatcher on the Home Distiller forums, there are links down below. Second of all, you should really, really go and check out the Birdwatcher's calculator, and I'll put a link down below for that as well. I'm not going to give you a super specific recipe about every little part of the recipe, and the reason is that it's going to be different depending on the volume you do, and you may as well do exactly the volume you want to do, right? There's a link down below for the calculator and that'll help you out with that a whole lot. So here is the deal with bird watches, guys. Basically it is a straight up sugar wash. The yeast is fermenting white sugar to create alcohol for you and it's pretty good for stuff like uh, a vodka or to use it for gin or anything like that. Pretty much any time you would have used a turbo sugar wash, you can use this instead. And a whole lot of people that I really respect guarantee me that it's a whole lot better. Now here's the thing guys, sugar loves to eat white sugar. Ah, uh, sugar. <laughs> Yeast loves to eat white sugar. It loves to do it, but there's not a lot in there in terms of nutrients and other things other than the straight up food or the fuel, I guess, to get the yeast going. So Birdwatchers is using tomato paste to give that yeast what it wants and give it some more nutrients. And it's also using lemon to adjust the pH. I don't think it's in the original recipe. I'd have to double check actually. You know what, let me know in the comments. Uh, but I am adding a little bit of Epsom salts to it as well, just to throw a little bit more fuel on that fire and give it everything it needs. But what Birdwatchers doesn't do is go crazy overboard and just throw more and more and more nutrients at the fermenter, filling it up with all sorts of gunk we don't need. It just gives the yeast what it needs to do its job. So I am using 25 kilos of sugar, that's one bag of sugar. That's literally why I'm using 25 kilos. I'm gonna aim for 1070 as a starting gravity and I'm going to use the calculator as a best guess for the values I need for my tomato paste, my Epsom salt and my lemon. Turns out that that is going to be somewhere between sort of 110 and 130 liters, I think, to get my 1070. Anyway guys, let's really roll that B-roll and get this thing done.
let's stop it right there. Okay team, so we have the sugar dissolved in hot water now and you've probably noticed that I was taking the sugar out of my boiler and that and that was simply because that was the easiest way to heat up a buttload of water. Next, you'll probably notice that I put the sugar in first, which wasn't the best idea, maybe. But the reason I did that is that I wanted to use the least amount of hot water possible so I find it easier at the end to get the temperature back down between sort of 20 and 28 degrees, ideally, before I pitch my yeast. You probably also noticed that I snapped my favorite plastic spoon was kind of silly of me to be messing around stirring that with the plastic spoon but anyway that sucks <laughs> just in case you haven't done this sort of thing before guys you will notice that the easiest way to tell that you've actually finished dissolving the sugar is when it goes completely clear and looks uh, transparent just like water again all right so on to adding in all the other things i'm going to put them in now so it's ensured that they're all mixed up really well by adding in the water in on top of it Before I fill up this fermenter, there's one more thing I want to do right now. Yeast, filtered water. Now ideally I should have done that the other way around, put the yeast in on top of the water, but it is what it is. I'll give it a little stir instead. That is 120 roughly litres of water in here now. So I just want to take a quick gravity reading and I'm going to use my uh, tool of choice for that sort of thing is the refractometer. So I'm actually up closer to 1080 right now. I'm going to add a little bit more water in here and see if I can knock that down below. If it's below 1070, I'm happy. Cool, I'm calling that 1068, which is fine by me. And you may actually be asking yourself, why does it matter? There's the same amount of sugar in there, right? It's gonna be the same amount of alcohol. So why would you wanna drop the specific gravity before pitching your yeast? And basically the answer is that it is more gentle on your yeast. It's gonna stress your yeast out less, and that is going to lead to less off flavors in the end. Now, different people will argue different uh, specific gravities that are ideal for this or different specific gravities that you can push it to for this. For me it's going to be more than two stripping runs anyway uh, so anything up to 150 liters I, it doesn't bother me I may as well go that high right I gotta do three stripping runs. That's what it is. So now all I need to do is make sure that this bad boy is under 30 degrees ideally under 28 I'd like to get it down to sort of about 25 ideally uh, but that may not happen. Anyway let me test the temperature and I'll let you know where we're at. So that is 28.3 degrees. Not exactly perfect, but I'll take it. The yeast is all creamy and bubbly and ready to go, so I'm going to pitch that now as well. And there's a bit you left, so just let me grab some more water. I just realized that I made a little bit of a screw up. I was planning on covering this thing up attaching my heater to my STC 1000 and then putting it under here to uh, make sure that it was staying warm enough throughout the ferment. Problem is I forgot my STC's pretty much hardwired into the fridge and honestly I can't be bothered moving that thing over here. <laughs> so I guess that is just how easy it is to get a bird watchers together. Now there are a few things that didn't go perfectly with this. There are a few things that uh, you could say that I did wrong, but at the end of the day, eh. It's not because I don't care, it's just that I really don't think that those little things are going to make the hugest difference in the world. Uh, but they are things that I'll be testing later on. If you noticed any of them, feel free to give a shout out 
<laughs> down in the comments below. And before I sign off guys, I have to say a huge, huge thank you to the people that have contributed to Still It already on Patreon. That is bonkers. That's kind of nuts. I wasn't really expecting anyone to be uh, pledging or signing up yet. I gotta say. <laughs> anyway, guys, you guys rock. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get this thing covered up. Let it get to bubbling away. And I will catch you guys next time. So if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. If you really liked it, have a think about subscribing. Catch me on Instagram if you want to see little updates on this bad boy over here. And I'll see you guys next week. Actually... Probably see you for a live stream. Anyway, see ya.